I'm here with Dr. James Watson. He's the director of the Climate Change Adaptation Program at Wildlife Conservation Society. James, can you give us some specific examples of what Wildlife Conservation Society is doing on the ground to work with people for managing for climate change? WCS, the organisation I work with, really have a varying response to, um, to climate adaptation of coastal uh, marine systems. Um, so, for example, in Madagascar, a big effort in Madagascar at the moment is identifying where vulnerable people are and where vulnerable reefs are. And what, we're, what the strategy is that if we think a reef is very vulnerable to the direct long-term impacts of climate change, and if we think the people are vulnerable to the effects of climate change, it's not a sensible place to put a marine protected area because desperate people ob obviously break the rules and try and get fish, as, uh, fish and, and other resources. So there we focus on fishing efforts, trying to change fishing behaviour and educating local people about trying to fish their reefs in a sustainable way. In Manus Island and Papua New Guinea, the, the really big thing we're doing right now is helping people adapt to the storm events. The storm events are really destroying a lot of island ecosystems. But what's interesting, we're also seeing the effects of storm surges, um, increased cyclone activity, which is smashing coral reefs and, and mangrove systems, as well as sea bed, uh, seagrass beds. So those, those storm events are actually increasing in frequency and also affecting coral reefs. We see people blow up their coral reefs. And these are the most biodiverse coral reefs in the world, the most protein rich bi uh, coral reefs in the world. They're blowing them up to build sea walls to stop uh, sea inundation of their villages. And that's got a massive effect on biodiversity, but there's also a massive effect on the people who live there because it's blowing up their own fishing uh, uh, areas. They're blowing up their own food resources. So it's, it's quite dramatic and quite terrible. So it sounds like, although climate change is a global problem, the solutions are really specific to local areas, aren't they? And you really have to know the local people and the context to be able to come up with useful solutions. Well, the standard solutions you see by the conservation community are marine protected areas, which do often have a great role in terms of protecting coral reefs, mangrove systems and seagrass uh, beds. And, they, and you see them, um, these being um, enacted upon and actually uh, implemented around the world. Other, other really good strategies we see uh, is stopping deforestation in the, in the ridges behind coral reefs on the mainland. If, if you stop deforestation along riparian systems or around forests on the top of hills, it stops the sedimentation flowing into the coral reefs and actually affecting those coral reefs. So what we see is a lot of conservation groups actually trying to restore degraded areas and protect forested landscapes to actually protect those coral reefs. Any global analysis which starts identifying, put a protected area here, work with local people there, doesn't make much sense. It's got to be bottom up. And what, what WCS does is it has a strategy of actually working with people and, and in the ecosystems they care about for long periods of time, 10, 20 years, to start formulating solutions from the bottom up and actually working out context-specific context solutions. So as I say, in Fiji, we work with Indigenous elders. In Madagascar, we work with the government and we work with uh, identifying marine protected areas. In, in PNG, in Papua New Guinea, we try and work with local provincial government as well as locals around education around um, storm surge and seawalls. So different strategies different, uh, for different contexts. And it's interesting talking about managing for climate change. We're not actually managing the symptoms of climate change themselves, are we? It's finding local stressors, other things, other problems that are occurring and managing for them to help compensate. That, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, I think the conservation science community really does focus on the direct impacts of climate change on coral reefs, on species, and that's important. But conservation is actually about people. I mean, wh what makes you motivated towards conservation is that you're trying to avert a current extinction crisis, which is going to get worse because of climate change. So the conservation solution actually isn't simply about understanding how species and ecosystems are going to respond to climate change, but how humans are actually going to respond to climate change, because humans are predominantly the threat. So you've mentioned a few solutions. Are these solutions working? Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell. In some places, I'd say yes. Like the solutions of identifying refugia and working with vulnerable um, local human communities does work. I mean, vulnerable communities really do know their, you know, the stresses of day-to-day -day living. And if you can help them fish in a better way and a more sustainable way, they often see the benefits straight away and often the conservation solutions are apparent very quickly. Um, in other cases, it's, just, it's hard to tell what's, what really the solution's gonna be especially in areas where extreme events occur, such as storms and cyclones, because all it takes is one big storm, one big sea st uh, storm surge event, and people react very quickly and, and, and often in a way that is very detrimental. 
So in some cases, we spend a lot of money trying to educate communities, try to build seawalls, and suddenly the seawalls just washed away. The village is very vulnerable again, and they go ahead and blow up their reefs because that's what they know, and that's what they could only do. So it's sad to say that in some cases, we're still working on, on the best solution. Thanks very much for coming and speaking to us about the research you and your organisation are doing on adaptation to climate change in coastal tropical areas. It's my pleasure. Thank you.